Welcome to this tutorial on dealing with repositories. In this third section, we show how to check out a local copy of a repository, make some changes and commit them back to the repository. But before we proceed, let me just introduce some conventions that we use in Subversion. At the highest level of a repository, there are three folders. The first one is the main body of the development, the trunk, originating from the start of the project until the present. This is the folder in which you will do the majority of your work. As a matter of fact, this is the folder that we will check out. We also get tags, and these are points in time on the trunk that you wish to preserve. For example, if you have a major data release every six months, say at the start of January and at the start of July every year, even though you keep on updating your data continuously in the trunk, if you created a tag, anyone can go back to say January 2012 and download the data that was applicable and relevant at that point in time. Branches are something that we will probably not use that much in our application. A branch refers to a copy of the code derived from a certain point in time of the trunk and it's used for applying major changes. As an example, Consider a software application that starts out as a Windows-only version. The developers may then choose to branch the project. And with one branch, they can actually make significant changes to the original code so that the application can run on, say, my, uh, Mac OS X. The two streams will evolve very differently over time, and the developers may decide to change the code in future again and actually merge the two branches into the main trunk and make the application, for example, cross-platform so that it runs on both Windows and Mac. At this time, you should have Tortoise SVN client installed on your Windows machine. So let's check out a repository. For this tutorial, each trainee has been provided a username. And it is typical the first letter of your first name followed by your surname, all in lowercase. And a password has also been provided to you. And you will use that username and password to access the temporary subversion repository that we've created. Next, you need to decide where you want to check your repository out to. I'm going to just create a folder on my desktop and call it SVN. And this is the folder for now where I'm going to check out all my repositories too. So I know they're all there. I can navigate into the SVN folder and this is where I want to check out my repository. When I right click, you'll see that there are two new subversion specific functions available in the menu. I'm going to use the first one to check out the repository. The URL used here contains three portions, and it may be different for your application. The first is the protocol with which we're going to connect to the repository. You are familiar with well-known protocols such as HTTP, HTTPS, and FTP, for example. <clears throat> here, however, we will use SVN plus SSH. The SVN, as you can imagine, refers to subversion and the SSH refers to a secure shell. And this allows us to connect securely to a SVN repository that is currently on one of the university servers. The second portion is the username. I've added my username, but you should replace it with your username assigned to you. And the third portion of the URL is the repository's address. If you want to connect to another repository, just adjust the address. Whoever owns and manages the Subversion repository should be able to provide you with all these necessary details. In the checkout directory, your path might look different depending on your Windows setup. What is important is that you add a name, GITMC for example, that describes the repository that you're checking out. The checkout depth remains unchanged as we want to check out all the lower level directories of the repository if they exist. And for the revision, we choose the head. 
which is the latest version from the repository. But here you can actually see now that you can check out any earlier version as well, provided that you know exactly what version you're looking for. And now we can click OK. A window will pop up prompting us for a password. And this is required simply because we use a secure shell on the server. And for this first checkout, you might actually have to provide it a few times, as many as three times. So let's carry on and just type our password in. Once it has completed the checkout, you will see the OK button visible at the bottom and also the top status saying checkout finished. Now you can simply click on OK. And you should be able to see your checked out project. If it simply looks like a normal folder, you'll have to take a break here and just restart your windows now. If you do not see a green circle, with a tick mark on the folder, take a break and restart Windows. One of the benefits of using Tortoise SVN is that it provides, or rather should provide you with these folder icons that indicate the status of your repository files. Here the green circle tick mark on the corner of the folder indicates that your local copy is unchanged. This is important. It is unchanged. It does not necessarily mean that it is synchronized with the repository. Just that you haven't made any local changes yet. But let's see if there's anything inside the repository. Indeed, there's a readme text file. And I recommend that you open this text file not with Notepad or WordPad, but rather Notepad++. If you right click on the readme file and don't have this edit with notepad++ option in your menu, please download it now before proceeding. I'm going to edit the file with notepad++ and you'll see it's got a short introduction and a couple of names without email addresses. I'm going to edit this file by adding my own name and my email address. When I'm done, I'm going to save the file and close the editor. And now you'll see that Subvision picks up that the local copy of the file has been edited and its logo changes from the green circled tick mark to a red circled exclamation mark. It probably cannot get more clear than this. You've changed something. So to push the changes back to the repository, right click on the file and choose the SVN commit option from the menu. A dialog will now appear and here in the top part you can add a descriptive message telling others what the changes entail. It is good practice to keep it concise, yet provide enough information should others in future want to see who performed the changes. So I'm going to just add added user and email address. In the lower portion of the dialog, you can see all the files that were changed since your last update. You can click on OK and the server might prompt you for a password again. As soon as the commit is finished, you can click on OK and you will see that the files icon has changed back to the good looking green circled tick mark. Remember the red circled exclamation mark icon is not bad. It is just a strong reminder that your local copy has been changed. Go ahead, 
make some changes and play around. And in the next section, we will demonstrate conflicts in the repository and how one can deal with them. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm.